Hey, Daily Dosers, it's Kristen from the Fallbrook campus, and I'm going to tell you a little story that's kind of awful, but when I was 18, I worked at this cafe. It was called the Corner Cafe, not the one at church, but it was this like breakfast, lunch, coffee place. It was super cute. And one day I was at work and I was asking my manager, hey, can I have Sunday off because I'd like to go to church? And I remember this coworker overhearing us talk and afterwards she goes, wait, are you a Christian? And I said, yeah. And what she said next, I will never forget. She said, whoa, I would have never guessed. Ouch. (laughs) I would like to sit here and tell you that um, it was because she had such a bad impression of Christians and I totally redeemed our reputation, but I think that would be a pretty big stretch. And it was one of those moments like looking back on that. I'm like, shoot, I wish I would have asked some clarifying questions of like, wait a minute, why do you say that? Or why would you think that? Or what about me screams heathen to you because I don't think I was like super bad, you know, at work or whatever, but there was just something about me that just did not feel Christian to her, did not feel Christ-like to her. And I think it's super interesting when we look at the Bible and the way that the Bible describes the way the world experiences Christians, sometimes the Bible puts it in this context of like a sensory experience. For example, uh, we're called the light of the world, like a light to see. We're, we're called the aroma of Christ. And in Matthew 5.13, we're called the salt of the earth. And in Matthew 5.13, it says, But if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. And here's kind of a weirdly difficult challenge. Try just for a second to describe the taste of salt without using the word salt or some derivative of salt. So you take your finger, some salt, it's salty right? I mean, Matthew 5.13 even confirms that. It says if salt loses its saltiness, like what else can salt be? Salt is salty. There's not like a, another note of a flavor in there. It's just salt. It's salt is salty. And you know what I found to be extra interesting is that salt actually cannot lose its saltiness because um, the chemical compounds, the molecular compounds that make salt, salt, it has to be salt and taste like salt. But if you were to break those bonds and do a new uh, chemical arrangement, you know, to use my terms, um, it's not salt anymore. So it's not going to taste salty. But if it's put together in a molecular compound to be salt, it will taste salty. And so why does the Bible use salt then for us? Well, I think it has to do with our experience the world's experience of us to the world as Christians. So how can we describe a Christian? Well, a Christian should be Christ-like. A Christian should not be able to be anything else but Christ-like because that's the very definition of a Christian. Chris Brown always says, it's a Christian, you know, like we're a little Christ. We're supposed to be an imitator of Christ. So we have to have Christ like qualities. And just like tasteless salt is actually not even salt, like it's, what is it? An unchrist like Christian, there's not even really a word for that because, like, what even is that? By definition, a Christian is to be Christ like. And so how do we stay salty? Because 18 year old me thought I was just doing fine, but apparently I was not the experience of Christ to those around me. In fact, they were shocked to find out that I was in the Christian camp, right? They were like, what? You? I've never experienced Christ in you. And that was a huge wake up call for me. And, you know, when we look at the life of Jesus, we see him moved with compassion, um, 
for those who were poor or those who were discarded by society. We see him forgiving those who hurt or betrayed him. We see him loving others and serving them with his life. And if the world is going to experience a robust, flavorful, undeniable Christ follower, then we have to start being Christ-like. And I think that's what Jesus is saying. You can't be a Christian yet not be Christ-like. And to my coworkers, I was bland. Let's face it. I tasted nothing. They tasted nothing of Christ when I was around. And so how would people describe you? Would people be shocked to find that you're a Christian? Or would people say, yes, Maybe maybe they don't put it in the terms like they are, just like Jesus. If they don't know Jesus, maybe they don't know that, but that there's something different about you, that you do not leave a bland taste in their mouth, but that they understand that there's something different about you.